G'day and welcome back and welcome back to my Eris radio. I'm going to do the case this week. Last week I did the radio. It was a little bit reluctant to work and I ended up changing all of the capacitors to get it to do anything. The wave change switch was contaminated with some black gunk. I cleaned that off and the radio worked surprisingly well. I didn't do an alignment. It's um, working well enough. It doesn't need anything. As I said in part one, this is not the most glamorous radio I've ever seen. Yeah, it's got some sort of uh, velour type material on the front that's been replaced. I do have a new cloth which I'll put on. And photos I've seen of these in good condition, they actually look alright. These two strips here are made of wood so I can repaint those. Uh, this Eris sign needs to be repainted. And this plastic magic eye may be able to polish it or, or paint it or something, I'm not sure. The finish on the radio isn't that bad but it has some scratches and dings. But the main thing is it's gone very very dark and you can't see the wood grain. This is looking inside the back of the radio. There's only four screws there and I think that whole front panel and the speaker will come out. So I'll undo the screws. I took the other three screws out but this particular screw will not move. Uh, it's been rounded off so, so I'll hit it with my iron for a while and see if it'll come out. Well, that should be good and hot by now. It is turning. Oh, I seem to have got it. Looks like it's just spinning there. It wasn't actually unscrewing. So, there we go. Uh, I can probably get this out, but I'll, I'll take the box that's holding the dial glass in. Looks like there's just two screws each side holding the assembly in. I need to hold the dial glass up and I think it's going to come out. There it goes. Alright, so this should come out. No, it's not. It's attached to the front there somehow. There's a little tiny screw there and one there and one up here as well. So I think if I take them out, it'll come away. It's attached to the front decorative uh, little fascia board there. Right, I'll try again. That's better. Look at that, they marked them one and two. <laughs> and I wonder what... That's just sitting there, I think. Yeah, just sitting there. So that's just slides in there, I think. I think, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of screws up there just holding the door on. I'll take that off and we're just about done. Right, I think that's about all I need to take off. This little front panel comes off as well. There's some screws underneath that'll come off. I'll leave it there at the minute. What I'm thinking of doing now is this little flip-up door. Maybe take it out to the workshop. I'll sand it off with some turpentine to see how well it responds. Maybe I can save it and I don't need to refinish it. I have the lid for the dial here, so I'm just going to lightly sand it. We'll see what happens. I'll drop a bit of turpentine on and I've got wet and dry or waterproof paper here. I mm, don't think it's going to work. Not it's gone through there. So yeah, look, it's just, <laughs> it's not going to work. So I'll just wipe that off. It's, it's taken the top coat right off actually. Alright, looks like I'm committed. I'm going to have to strip this off and start again. I'm going to paint strip this. I've done so much paint stripping on the videos I'm not going to show it all again but just quickly I just put a commercial paint stripper on. You just get this at the hardware. It's nothing special. I think it's poly strip. Now while it's working, I put a bit of cling film over the top, stop it drying out, and it'll make it work faster and more effective. So I'll leave that. It probably needs to sit there for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. I'll probably have to do that a couple of times before it cleans it off completely. So I'll do this and all the uh, radio case, I'll come back when it's finished. I'll strip the finish off the case. 
after I stripped it I've just rubbed it back with some ultra fine steel wool and methylated spirits and that's all I've done I haven't sanded it it doesn't need it the case is very well made but you can see they've just uh, sanded through the edge there but that's about the only defect I can see in the case this is the door or the flap that covers the dial and I'm going to treat it a little bit differently this time I've been talking to a guy named Pete and he's a furniture refinisher or restorer and he said use a 50-50 shellac and methylated spirit mixture and put it on as a wash coat so you put that on first then stain it and then put your finishes on and if you don't like it you can wash it off with the methylated spirit so I've got a little pad here so the shellac's already mixed and you just add another 50% or one to one of the methylated spirit Now it's left some marks there, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Maybe I should have used a bigger cloth, not so small. I've rubbed that off with methylated spirits, I've got a wider cloth, I think this will be a better way of putting it on. Yeah, that's, that's better. That looks okay, I ended up moving the camera so I could go that way, so uh, it, it looks much better this way. I'll do the rest of the radio and we'll come back. Alright, I've done everything. I ended up thinning it out a bit more. It was drying way too quick. So I put some more methylated spirits in and uh, it's come up pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'll have to leave it. I assume it's overnight. I'd better ask Pete what I'm supposed to do. This is the veneer behind the door that opens for the dial. And look at that. It's beautiful, but you couldn't see it before. I reread Pete's message, it said leave that shellac overnight to harden, so I'll do that. In the meantime, I'll have a look at this board that's uh, got the speaker on the back there. Uh, I'll need to pull it apart because I want to change the cloth on it. Now this little Eris sign here has a little pin at each end, so I'll take them off. Here's the strip with Eris written on it, and I think it's brass, so that'll polish up nicely. The little uh, mounting tag on the end is broken off. Let's have a look at this magic eye. I'll turn it over. Here's the back of it. It's made from aluminium. The fabric on the front's been changed, obviously. So I don't know if someone's just bent that down to get it to stay there. That's going to break when I bend it back. It is absolutely going to break off. No, no it didn't. Okay. <laughs> the other side of this escutcheon is trapped under this bar, so I'm taking that off. And I should be able to bend that little aluminium tab back. Alright, that should fall out, I think. There we go. When I removed the chassis, I cut the wires to the uh, dial lamps here. But they had little thumb screws there. I could have just undone them. I'll take the speaker off and need to lay the board flat to put the fabric back on. So I'll get this off. These nuts look like they're for a Dutch frigate or something. Huge. There we go. I'll remove this magic eye bracket as well. I'll take this outside later to strip the fabric off. It's going to make too much dust if I do it in here. It's interesting though, there's a number of colours here. There's that one, and that one's much the same as that. There's a dark there where it's been covered, and it's lighter here. I think that's the original colour. So maybe it looked alright when it was that colour. This little bar with Eris written on it is brass, I'm pretty sure. I'll just try and solder this back on. I'll just put some bakers soldering flux on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do it with this. I'm going to get the bigger soldering iron. This will do a better job. I think that'll do it. Okay. That's good enough. Not very neat, but um, that'll work. Destroyed my paint job on the other side. The shellac's been drying overnight and it's okay, it, it came out flat. Those marks I was worried about, they've all disappeared. I did run over it with some 4-0 steel wool just to make sure it was all smooth. Um, I've been toying with some colours here. Um, I usually use walnut, which is this one, and this one is uh, elm. Walnut's got a bit more black in it, this is a browner colour. So I thought I might try the elm. Walnut seemed to be the default colour back then. Uh, but L might be good too, so I'll give that a shot, I reckon. I have this cover strip here. The top is dark and the front is a lighter colour. This is off the front of the radio or just on the top front edge of the radio. So I can try both colours. I was going to try oak for the lighter colour. 
So I'll try it on this. If I make a mess of it, it's easy enough to clean up. So I've got some of the elm stain on the uh, cloth here, the pad. So I'll put that on there. That looks pretty good. It's quite yellow, isn't it? I'm not sure on that colour. It looks more into the 60s. I think I should go back to walnut. I'll do this front in this colour here, which I believe is oak. It is oak. I shall put that on there. I'll see what colour that comes up as. I'm hoping that's a yellow colour. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not much different to that, is it? All right, I'll go and rethink about my colours, I think. Um, that's dried off. There's the top. It's too browny, and there's almost no contrast there. This should be a, a lighter, I'm not going to say blonde, but a yellowy colour. Yeah, that's that's no good. I'm going to rub this off. We'll start again. Well, after a seemingly endless parade of different stains that I've tried, I'm going to stick to walnut on the on the main part of the radio and jara on the on the highlighted parts of the front here. This is walnut, and uh, I, I really think this suits this era of radio. It just seems to go with it. So there you go. That's what it'll look like. So I'll do the door as well. I let the stain dry for a minute or two and then just wiped off the excess. So that looks good, it's nice and even. Alright, I'll start on the case. Alright, here's the case, I'll start on that. Uh, once again I let it dry and just take off the excess so you get a nice flat surface. That looks good, looks really good. This is one of the side panels off the front of the radio, I'll call it a highlight panel and I'm going to put this jar of, ooh, jar of stain on. Oh that might look alright. Yeah. I was trying to get a bit of red into it. Doesn't look bad does it? Oh, I'm not sure. That might be all right. This Jarrah is not coming up the color that I want. I'm going to use maple. I've done it on this front one here. There's not a lot of difference, but it just has a bit more red in it, which I think I like. This strip along the back may have been the same color as these front panels. So I think I'll put some uh, maple on here and try and highlight that as well. I'm going to put the maple on top of the radio here, this center piece. I'll keep away from the other piece of timber there. I've stained everything I need to do. I need to leave it to dry. I might even leave it overnight. Actually, it's a bit late now. It's already the top coat. I've run over it with a tack cloth, so everything's ready. It looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with the stain. I'll use this Duramax clear gloss. It, it's all right. It works okay. It doesn't come out super glossy, which I like, but the drying time's about an hour between coats, so it takes most of the day just to you know, to give it six coats or something. I'm not going to leave the camera in the room because it just ruins them. So I'll take it out and uh, I'll show you some progress reports as I go along. A quick progress report. I put three coats on yesterday, let it dry overnight. I rubbed this back with some 4-0 steel wool and I've given it another coat. So it's got four coats on it. I'll probably go for about six. But it's looking good. I haven't sort of got any runs or anything in it and nothing's landed in it, no flies or something. So it's looking all right so far. I'll give this another two, maybe three coats today. I'll have to let it harden for about four days or a week or so, then I can cut it back. I'm not quite sure what's going on with this maple here. It's not a lot different to the walnut. It is different, but I expected it to have a bit more red in it, perhaps. Um, it does have the yellow in it, which was what I was also going for. But uh, yeah, it's just not quite as contrasty as I would have liked. You can see the contrast better here. This is a walnut and this has a yellowy red tinge to it. So yeah, maybe it's got enough contrast. This dial glass is also painted black on the back. So I need to take the glass out. 
the glass is cracked in the corner so I've got to be careful as I take the glass out I don't upset that crack. It appears to have an adjustable pivot on each end so I think I can take it out and that clamp can stay there. I'll loosen this nut off and hopefully I can undo the screw and it should back out of the little bracket there. And there it goes. All right. Hmm, maybe I should have done the other end as well. I should have backed out both sides at the same time. It's okay, it's just hanging in there. That one's not coming out as well. I'll unscrew this end, doesn't seem to be coming out. Hmm, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe I can just unhook it. There it goes. I forgot to remove the spring on the back. Yeah, I think that'll come away now. All right. That crack may not be going all the way through, it might stop at this hole. Either way, I'll put some super glue on here and that'll stabilise the crack. I'll remove these brackets here, take it outside and I'll refinish the black here. This little adjustable pivot for the glass is frozen, it's seized up. I'll see if I can loosen it up. I, I could just leave it, but I'll see if I can do it. I've had it soaking in penetrating oil, so it should come out. Oh, look, it's all freed up. And there it is. Looking at it now, the problem was that this screw where the slot is has belled out a bit or flared out and the nut can't get past, so I couldn't undo the nut to loosen it off. If I can just get the nut to pass through that, I think it'll be okay. I have a 5mm die here. I took the original nut off, put the die on, put the nut back on and then locked it on with a second nut. So I can put that in a vise or something and I should be able to just run the die off. Now with a bit of luck I can just do this by hand. Well, that really was belled over. Okay. Now, now I can just unlock the two nuts and we should be okay. And there it is. Yeah, that's good. Okay. This boss is riveted to the plate, but it's rotates, so I'll just hit it a few times. It should reset it. Tight. That's it. Done. So that now screws in all right. I'll put the lock nut on. Hopefully. There we go. Great. I've got the box that holds the dial out here now, and I'm going to paint strip that, I think. It's got some marks in it. And it's very crazed as well so i'll paint strip that one this is off the base of the radio this is okay i'm just going to sand that down and refinish it in black i also have the little door or flap that covers the dial it's got black on the back of it as well i have sanded it already but i'll give it another sanding and uh, i'll just refinish that with some undercoat and black i put some paint stripper on the backing there for the dial uh, i need to look at this plinth here it's in pretty good nick actually it just needs a sand this joint in the corner here had come apart, uh, that piece there had cracked, so I glued it back together and clamped it, and I've clamped this as well. So the joint's nice and tight now, and it just needs a bit of filler in there. I'll sand this whole thing back, and that should be okay to finish. I'm going to use some car body filler to fill it up, but I've got way too much hardener on it. Anyway, this should be a very light pink colour, not red. Uh, there, that's just starting to go off already. Okay, anyway, I've managed to fill it, I think. I'm taking the stripper off this backboard, but it doesn't seem to be melting the you know, finish, whatever it is. It does if you dig in. Yeah, so I'm not sure what it is. It's coming off now. I, I think it just needs the scraper on there to, to really dig into it. I'll try this scraper first. See what happens. So yeah, it's coming off now. Needs sharpening. That's got most of it off. I'll use a furniture scraper on it. As long as the board's flat, that'll work fine. There, yeah, it looks pretty good. That's come up okay. I'll neutralise it with some methylated spirits, then I'll go and uh, sand it off and it'll be ready to paint. I think when I left last night, this still had the remains of the stripper on it. I've cleaned it up and sanded it off so it's ready to be uh, you know, finished off. The corner here on the base I've 
sanded that back so that's nice and smooth. I forgot to bring these out last night. These are the two edge panels off the front and that's the escutcheon off the Magic Eye. And I had to get some paint mixed up. For some reason beige is out this season. So I've got it mixed up. It's not a bad match. I probably would have chosen a different colour but I want to keep the radio looking like it did so beige it is. I also stripped the paint off this brass error sign that's along the front of the radio and it's come up really nice. I can't put a primer on here. If I do, when I rub back the letters here to reveal Eris, it's going to have a grey ring around all the words or the letters. So I need to just put a paint straight on there. I'll make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, it should stick. It should be okay. As usual, I'm not going to leave the camera in here while I paint. Uh, so I'll take the camera out. I'll put some undercoat on all these. The Eris sign, I'll just wait till I put the top coat on these guys over here. I used a primer filler to undercoat these pieces of wood and this sticks really well to the wood. To just make sure it's nice and smooth I'm using some very fine steel wool and that'll get into the little grooves here to well certainly enough to be effective and make it nice and smooth for the top coat. I'm cleaning up the escutcheon as well and once again if I use sandpaper uh, that'll be all gone on the edges there. So this is good and that's really smooth. I need to clean up all the steel wool and I'll paint these items here black and I'll do the beige on these ones. I'll take the camera out and once again show you when it's finished. All the paintwork's come up well. I'll set it aside, let it harden for a couple of days and then I'll just give it a quick polish. They don't need too much. This stuff over here came out fantastic. As I said earlier, I struggled with this colour but I think it looks really good. It's a beigey custard colour now. Um, so if I get a new car, I'm going to get a Volvo painted like this. I'll move all this stuff away, I'll go and get the case and we'll polish that, but there is one little job I need to do first. I need to polish the paint off this Eris lettering here, so I'll get a bit of wet and dry and I'll try and do that. I've almost got this, there's a little bit on the bottom of that E there, I think it's still there. Yeah, that, that needs a tiny bit more. That looks pretty good, that looks very good. That looks fantastic, that's going to lift the look of the radio. Uh, there's a little bit of paint still on the E, bit more on the S, I'll just clean that off, uh, but it needs a clear coat over the top to stop it tarnishing, but I'm very happy with that. I said I was going to bring out the case and give it a polish, but I won't, I'll just demonstrate on the door here, and I'll do the case off camera. I've done this so many times that I don't want to keep repeating myself. If you haven't seen what I do, just watch this little bit, this will take a minute or two. If you've seen it all before, just fast forward. I have everything I need here, some wet and dry sandpaper, dishwashing liquid, and a couple of automotive car polishes and some water. I'll put some water on there and I'll try and put a bit on the uh, wet and dry paper there. In some past videos it was suggested I add a drop of dishwashing liquid to um, make the paper move a bit easier, it sticks otherwise. So I've taken that on board. I'll sand the finish down till it looks flat and the little ripples that you get and imperfections are removed and then I'll polish it back up again. So that's, that may be enough. I'll just take this off. You can see here that that's been flattened right off. Down the other end here, you can still see where it's glossy and it, it doesn't sit flat. So I need to keep working on that till I get that right. Alright, that's looking pretty good. I've got rid of most of the glossy bits. The tiny little bits won't matter too much. Be good if you can get them all out though. For the first cut I'll use this, this is a fairly coarse cutting compound. You would use this after you'd painted your car and you would cut it back. This will polish it, but it'll be a matte finish. I need to use a finer grade grit polish on it to, uh, to, to get the gloss back. I've cleaned the coarse cutting compound off. I need to get that off so it doesn't mix with the finer one I'm going to use next. I'm going to use this. This is a cream cut and polish, much finer than the green one I used first. This one's fine enough that you would probably use it every 12 months just to, you know, restore the shine on your car. I'll let that dry and then I should be able to buff it off. I've got a soft cloth here to try and buff that off and it seems to be coming off alright. I have an electric buff here, I'll use that to finish off.
that's come up pretty good it's flat and you can see the beautiful grain through it and it's got a nice shine it's not glossy it's just got a shine so I'm, I'm happy with that level of gloss I'll go and get the cabinet and I'll polish that I'll do it off camera I'll come back when it's all finished I finished polishing everything and it came up really nice I have master off so you can't see it at the moment I have to do this black area at the back here I've got some uh, matte black here so I'll use that so that's the reason it's all masked up I've cleaned all this up sanded it back I had to scrape the old paint off so I'll put a bit of paint on that'll be it I can start putting the radio back together the local radio station plays rock and roll for a couple of hours in the afternoon on Saturdays so I enjoyed that I turned it up a bit my wife yelled out, what are you doing out there? You've got a party going on. I said, no, no, I'm just polishing my wood. She said, oh, I better leave you then. I let that black dry overnight, so that's quite dry. I said I'm ready to put the radio together, but I need to make a little panel to fit in here. I was going to get all fancy and route bits of wood and stuff, but I don't think I'll bother. I will just cut a piece of wood to fit in here and maybe put some little metal brackets on the bottom there to screw it on. So I've got 258 that way and 90 that way. I have a bit of ply here from an old radio, it's the right thickness so I'll use that. That's all finished. Uh, the radio mounting bolts go in here. I might have a problem with that. I hadn't uh, allowed for that. I'll be able to modify it if it gets in the way. There was a bit of foil screen inside here. It fell apart, so I'll replace it. This is just tin foil, but that's all I've got. These two shields need to be grounded to the chassis. The chassis mounts across here, so that's done automatically. I've made a little jumper up, and I can put a screw in there or something, and either mount it to that or mount it to the chassis and I've made it long enough that you can take this panel off and let it hang on it like a lanyard. I'll do the grill cloth now. I got this cloth from Corinne Mass in the Netherlands. She wove this specially for me and for my radio. She does keep a supply of other radio cloths on her website uh, but she didn't have this particular design for this particular radio. The problem I always have with these is getting everything all squared up getting the um, you know the window that you're going to see the cloth through on the on the radio um, to be lined up along the edges and and equal so that the, you know the pattern is exactly the same top and bottom where it exits the the viewing area so i've pinched my wife's blocking boards she uses this after she knits something she washes it and that relaxes the fibers or something and you can lay it out square on the board to dry and it comes with a little box of pins that you use to run around the edges and pin the wool out but I don't think that's going to be any good for me what I think I'll do is use masking tape along the edges here and that way I can keep it square and it's not pulling if I put a pin in there it's just going to pull one bit and you know between that and the next one this piece of material that Corinne has sent me is square it's pretty good she's cut it very very square on the ends so I can use the lines here to line the material up I think so what I'm thinking of doing is maybe put some tape on one end and then stretch it and then match it down the other end. Yeah, I'll, I'll see how I go. So I put that edge right in the corner and tape it. And then keeping it lined up and stretched, I'll put a bit of tape there. Now if I keep that line straight and then put some tape here, And just try and match it on this corner as well. Now of course the center is all pulled in that needs to be stretched out as well. So if I pull that out to about there it lines up with that. And then pull this over as well so it's all in a straight line. And just keep working my way around until I've got it all square. <laughs> no I've made a mistake. 
This gloss should have been the other way around. The speaker baffle board is going to go straight on top. So I need to turn this over. I'll come back when I've done that. All right, I've flipped the cloth over. I've put more tape around the edges here. That's pretty square, I think. And I found that I've put a bit of tape there. I can pull it up to the line there and then kind of stick it down. Let me finish this last bit off. I'll come back and we'll see how it all looks. I made up a frame and it represents what the cutout is that you'll see through here. This is too wide. It actually, you'll only see about this much of the pattern. Uh, this is the height. I think that's about right. So this bit will overhang. And I put bits of tape on here so I can see what the bow looks like. And you can see it there. Uh, this side looks good, but this side has a little bit of a bow in it. So I'm going to change that masking tape and try and pull it over a bit better. I'll use the frame here as a guide. So that looks better, I think. The purpose of the frame is to frame the pattern this way and this way. So if I was to line this up, it needs to be about equal there, so about there. If I line that diamond up there, this diamond here should be the same, and it's, that's pretty good, I think. And just by coincidence, the pattern is about right that way too. So all we need to do is make sure it is square with the pattern. Pattern's just cut the diamond off there. The diamond is the same as up the top there. And along here, yes, just cut it off. So that's pretty good. Here's the speaker board, or baffle board. And I've put little pencil marks there and there. That lines up with the edge of the frame. So if I line that up, I also have a pencil mark across here. Actually, it's top and bottom. So my plan is to clamp a piece of wood along here. That'll position the baffle board that way. I'll put some masking tape across here. That'll make a good indicator, I think. I'll just cut it and then I'll have a pretty good mark to line up with. I've put contact adhesive on only the board here. I haven't put it on the fabric. So I should be able to press that down. And if it is wrong, I can take it off again. It will peel off. Okay, let's hope that's okay. This looks good. I've taken the masking tape off the end here and just put a bit of adhesive there and pushed that back down again. But uh, it's nice and square. The lines are straight and they're square. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's, it looks fine. What I did to get this on here was way over the top. I just thought it might have been a good way of doing it. Uh, but it has come up the way I want it. So yeah, okay. I have everything I need to assemble the radio. This is the door that covers the dial. Um, on the back, it has a couple of little bits of felt to go on there. So I've cut some little strips out with my laser cutter. So they go in here. I think the glass runs along there when you open the door. So that runs across the top of the glass and one down the other end. So I'll glue those two in there. And I have two little round ones and that goes there. And the other one goes in here. So once they're glued in, I'll put everything together. I might show little stages of the assembly and that's about all. It's the reverse of how I pulled it apart. So with a bit of luck, in a few seconds, we should have a finished radio. I need to stabilize this crack in the dial glass and I've bought a windscreen repair kit. Now this is supposed to be invisible. It should disappear. Well, it does in the ads. Now, of course, I could have just used super glue and that would have done the job, but this is supposed to make it completely disappear. <laughs> and I can't see it disappearing. It's a bit of a test for when I really need to do it. Yeah, it's not quite disappearing like it does in the ads. There's a little plastic sheet in the repair kit. You put that on until it cures. This requires UV light to cure it. I've got to put it outside for 10 to 30 minutes or something. So I'll do that. I'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. This should have set so I can take the plastic off. And now I should be able to just clear off the remainder of the resin. So that's cleaned off. It, you couldn't say it's invisible. It's probably less visible. It'd be about the best you could say. It's probably not a very good example because on a windscreen you just have a star crack or something. You would fill it up and it would disappear maybe. 
it has gone all the way through i can feel it on the other side so it has glued the whole thing together anyway look i was just seeing if it would be any better than using super glue in future what well, it might be a little bit better perhaps i've put all the major assemblies together the speakers on the magic guy uh, the little dial here so everything's ready to go back in the case first thing to do is put these side panels in I'll put the other one in as well put in the speaker baffle as well so I've put the little blocks and the other fasteners in so this is all held together the next thing I need to do is put in the dial and that goes in there and there's just four screws to put in around here I've put the four screws in so that's secure I think I'll turn it over and we'll see what it looks like from the front well there it is it looks a little bit better than it did originally I'll see how my glass goes in here there it goes very nice leave it with me I'll put the chassis in uh, we'll have a look at it from the back and I'll put the back cover on then we can do a test on it I've refitted the chassis I've connected all the wires speaker and everything I've also put a magic eye in Whilst the cabinet was drying off, I cleaned up the chassis. It's, it's come up nice. It's sort of got a little bit of a corrosion in the CAD plating. or It's got a bit rough, I think, but it looks good. It looks original. I'm very happy with it. I said Phillips must have had an input into this company. These are Phillips looking uh, cans that they got on the coils. It also had the black capacitors, which were very common in Phillips sets. It also has this fusible link here. This is the mains coming in. It goes through that link and back into the transformer at the back here. The link there is made of rose metal, which melts at about 100 degrees. So if the transformer overheats, it melts the rose metal, lets the link go and breaks the contact. That was very typical of Phillips transformers. I'll put the back panel on. I don't think I showed this. Um, it was in pretty good condition. It did have bits of paint and uh, scuff marks on it, but I've cleaned it up. I found a bit of paint that matched and uh, yeah, that's come up nice. So I'll put the screws in here. We'll turn it around and have a look at the front. There it is in all its glory. It's finished. I'm really happy with it. The cabinet responded very, very well. I didn't have to strip it off two or three times. So I'm very happy with it. It just went so smoothly. I discovered the knobs had traces of paint in the groove here. So I repainted them. I matched the color here. This is what they had in there. So I did it. I thought white might be better, but I think that's perfect. We had a look at the dial glass before and that looks fantastic too. It's a really nice looking glass. I managed to get an EM4 Magic Eye. It's new old stock and it should work alright. I haven't tried it. In fact, I haven't tried the radio since I put it back in the cabinet, so perhaps I should do that. I'll turn it on with my Miracle on-off volume control switch that I found in my stock. I, it's warmed up. I haven't got a station yet. There's 500 metres, so there should be a station just in here somewhere. Choose. Oh, there it is. Key holes, not seeing the whole picture. Ooh, it comes on fast. And our main character, Charlie, does. Look. She's a book binder, so she, which is a bit... Uh, that's pretty good. I only sort of calculated where the needle should be attached, so that's come up exactly on the spot. The sanctuary. So it all sounds, and you know, they also do very beautiful organic produce. It sounds great. There's the magic eye. It's a dual type magic eye, so it has a fine and a coarse adjustment when you tune in. I think the one on the right is the coarse adjustment, the fine adjustments on the left here. So if you tuned in a station, these two eventually would cross and then you would fine tune it with the ones on the left here. Unfortunately, the valves are weak in this radio. My friend Blitz over in Germany from his uh, YouTube channel, he's trying to source some for me. He will send them over when he finds some and hopefully that'll work a bit better than it is now. I'll run it down to another strong station, which is the uh, racing station. Also living... Uh yeah, so even that's not enough to close that. These EM4s are very hard to get, very expensive. I managed to get a couple from a friend at the radio club, so I'm really happy to get the original eye in there and not have to use a Russian substitute. There was a sticker on the front of the radio that I had to remove when I refinished the radio cabinet, but before I did I made a copy of it and I've reproduced it and I've stuck it on here now. This is a water slide sticker. So I'll let that dry for a while and this radio is completed. Hi 
I hope you enjoyed watching me work on this radio, and I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure. <laughs>